Today we we heard a miraculous story about as a Jesus fate five thousand men. He plus a woman and children probably less than one ten thousand five ten thousand fifteen thousand people maybe. This uh, story. When I was uh, young, uh, I always when a Sunday school teacher told told uh, this story, I always think Jesus uh, made magician and then break it, and then all of a sudden and then grow again, and then break and grow again, and I said I open my eyes and then open my mouth to and then look at. Wow, wow, what a magician Jesus is. I always have a question. Why Jesus can use these uh, five loaves and then two fish to feed 5,000 people? Why did Jesus not make a stone into bread when that's a, that's a Jesus received the temptation from the evil. Why Jesus not do this for himself? Always a kind of a question. Do you have a good answer for me? Think about this. If Jesus can feed five thousand dollars with just five loaves and then two fish, why not? Jesus it's a piece of cake for Jesus, right? Well, today we read um, we read the letter Matthew, and as a chapter fourteen. Even though that we read start from thirteen to twenty one, but I would like to to everybody to uh, to read uh, to uh, that's the previous one. That's a one to twelve. Uh, can Gilbert you read for us one to twelve? And that time Herod the ruler heard reports about Jesus. And he said this to his servants, This is John the Baptist, he has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. For Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had been telling him, It is not lawful for you to have it. Though Herod wanted to put him to death, he feared the crowd, because they regarded him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before the company, and she pleased Herod so much that he promised on oath to grant her whatever she might ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. The king was grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he commanded it to be given. He sent and had John beheaded in the prison. The head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, who brought it to her mother. His disciples came and took the body to bury it, but they went and told Jesus. The author of Matthew tried to put these two together. Before that, so Jesus uh, uh, made this uh, a miracle. We see, we understand, this something that's a very evil thing happened. Somebody was murdered. Who is that guy? John the Baptist. Who is John the Baptist? Is there anything, is there any relationship with Jesus Christ? Yes. Think about this. In your cousin, just have a, I'm sorry, have an accident. Even if it's just an accident, and hurt himself. No, no. He just hurt himself and then what's he doing? Happy? No, absolutely not. He must be very sad. And then that's a John the Baptist. It's not just Jesus or Calvin, also his good friend or colleague. But it's kind of brutal murder. Brutal murder, this event 
we read, we, we read this morning that Jesus' fate is planned by the evil one. Think about this. If you were there, or you were Jesus, what's your feeling of your emotion? It must be very really sad. Maybe sometimes you're angry. Why? Why? He is God's servant why he was killed, was murdered. Jesus Christ 
does not care about himself. But when Jesus Christ look at us, Jesus Christ has come patient. So this story or this comparison can answer us today. In the past, Jesus Christ cared about those 5,000 men, or that's uh, 15,000 people there. Feed them, help them, talk them, guide them. Today, Jesus Christ will continue to teach us, help us, guide us. So I would like to come back to these uh, stories. We try to think about the scenario. This happened in the evening. It's about, yeah, ready. That's a, the disciples reminded Jesus, hey, hey, sorry, it's a time for them to, to, to go home. But what did Jesus say? You give them something to eat. Hmm. Think about the Gilbert area, two elders today. And I said, give them something to eat. And you say, Pastor, they have 15,000 people there. Well, well, well. So you feel this uh, is an honor? I don't think so. Maybe you're afraid to say that. <clears throat> Jesus, be realistic. Think about this. There's a 15,000 people there. How about let them go? And then maybe they can help themselves. We cannot do anything. So I want to try to raise your attention at all. Why? Of course, today uh, when we read this story, we know that, oh, Jesus made a miracle, and then Jesus fed those uh, 5,000 people. It's heavy ending. But try to think about this. If you were there, what do you have on the five loaves and two fish? And Jesus said, Feed them. Think about what's your feeling. I don't think that's how any you say, Oh, that's an awesome responsibility. Oh, great. Oh, let's go. Let's do something for them. Maybe it's a shock. The Bible did not say this. But think about their response. When they heard this, they say, do something to feed them. And then maybe they were happy. Yeah, they were, they were afraid. They were very fearful and hopeless. Because they had found a limited resource. But we thank God. Because God is love, and also Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So He can make these uh, uh, just five loaves and two fish to feed all of us. And this story tells us a lot. Yes, Jesus Christ, nothing is impossible for Him, for God, of course. But think about it. If we were there, yes, and we do have only limited resources, okay, but we still can do something. After Jesus Christ's blessings and then prayer, I always remind you that uh, not in, Jesus said go. Jesus did not did not feed them directly. Jesus did not go down and then break this and then to feed. Those crowds. Jesus Christ, uh, after blessing and prayer, and breaking and pass on to his disciples. And his disciples go to the crowds, go to the people, and then feed them. And Jesus Christ would like to invite everyone to participate in his miracle. Jesus Christ would like to invite you, everyone, to participate in his mission. But I would like to let us 
Stretch our hands like this. Now palms up. Let us do this. Do you have it? Do you have something? No, we have nothing. But actually, we are better than them. Maybe we, our part, of, we have credit card, and we have some, yeah, we have some cash. It's actually we can buy more than five dollars and two fees. We can go as a patient test and to buy a lot of uh, delicious food. But think about this: we, even though we still have limited resources. I don't want to do this comparison to those disciples uh, of resource or they, what they have. But think about this. We still, after God's grace, we can do something. And I want you to uh, still use your hand and then turn this way. One, your right hand, and then, and then touch, touch a friend next to you. And then the other one still still put your your your, thumbs, your palms still up, but and then you put like this, like this. And think about this. Try to figure out that Jesus Christ with with His blessing, even that we had limited resources, we still can be blessings for others. We still can give. People something. Maybe not to eat. But we may make a phone call. We may write a note of encouragement or say, Hello, I miss you. I pray for you. You know, that means a lot. Means that you are not just thinking that, oh, oh, I have just limited uh, resource. Uh, if we always focus on our limitations, our weaknesses, our inabilities. I don't think we can do anything. I don't think we can do anything. But the miracle or the problem, I will not say problem, the miracle is that with God's praising and then and then help, we can do a lot of things. But unless we would like to stretch our hands, say God. Need your help. But we are not that kind of that kind of disciples say, Jesus Christ, give me more and more and more. I'm hungry. Just we listen that song. I'm hungry. And then today I'm uh, uh, I'm okay, but tomorrow I will be hungry again. So I need more and more and more. But trusting God, even though we have only limited resources, we still can put our hand like this and give something to us. Think about that. So not you. Jesus Christ will not say, say do something that's a uh, that's a miraculous kind of humongous things or big things. But think about that. So Jesus Christ asked us, "Do you care about people around you? Think about what they need. What kind of." Uh, 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 you can provide. Sisters and brothers, think about this. We are limited. But together we can do something. And together with our, with our brothers and sisters, we can do something. And also together with Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus Christ will make another miracle on us and in our individual life. Let us pray. Have mercy upon us. Yes, we know our limitation. And we know you love us. You want to use us. And you create us not without purpose, without plan. You create us not because not not accidentally. But we know you love us and you have a wonderful plan upon us. Please help us as we always come to you, not just ask your help, your support, your comfort your guidance. 
continue to lead us, help us, so that we may go step out to our comfort zone and think about and do something to care, to love our neighbors. Give us strength. Give, in, give, up, give us encouragement. We can continue to be your faithful disciples. And we pray for the